Can the US prevent a nuclear strike through hacking techniques? It's 100% possible. One of our number one goals is to establish footholds into these regimes uh, to ensure that one, we can monitor them for intelligence, and two, disrupt them from causing harm uh, to the rest of the world. And we actually saw some components of this around the Stuxnet program that was released on Iran centrifuge program uh, for their nuclear capabilities. The United States had hacked into um, Iran's infrastructure and implanted malicious software um, that set back the program for, for a number of years. So it's definitely possible, and it's definitely something that we use um, as a method to be able to throw off both program development as well as the, the missiles themselves. If I were the United States military, I wouldn't want that capability known. And what I would do is plant code in all of the missiles that could ever be launched in their guidance systems and everything else and only use it in the event that we detected you know, an actual launch happening that was that was overtly going towards us. So, you know, hey, they launched North Korea launches a missile at us. You know, now it enacts you know the the malicious software and causes the thing to launch back at them and blow up in their face. And the truth of the matter is, you know, we will most likely go and and, and hack somewhere in the build chain so that we have what we call persistence, a way of of maintaining a foothold in that environment and in the technology um, as it's moving through. And we're super crafty. Um, you know, there's techniques that have been discovered where you know we've implanted code in like RAM sticks and you know hardware devices and, and network controllers and things like that to where even if you were to wipe the whole thing and put new firmware on, they're still in place um, actively there. And a lot of our capabilities are stealthy. They're designed to to not be detected for a significant amount of time and hopefully um, you know trigger when we actually need them. And those are definitely capabilities that that are very specific to to our government as well as you know our, our allies and what we have um, at our arsenal with Cyber Command and everybody else. If you look at um, the sophistication levels and, and kind of who's who's the top players versus kind of who's who's getting into this game, you know China, Russia, United States, the three biggest ones. You look at North Korea, and they're st still very, very much uh, we, we, what we would consider very immature um, in their program and what they're able to do and launch. Uh, we saw a few years ago with the whole Sony breach where they're able to you know topple a, co a company based on a movie being released. Um, their capabilities are still very, very immature when it comes to hacking. Uh, it's widely believed that they have um, you know, help and assistance from China uh, when it comes to the hacking teams that they leverage and where they're actually doing it out of. Uh, but at the same time, their capabilities are far, far more immature. So they do have the ability to do disruption, um, and they're usually more on the disruption side, less on the intelligence gathering purposes because they get that from other countries that are more allied with, with North Korea.